What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to be showing you something that I wish I knew about when I was starting out in Unreal Engine 5, because I add this when I start any new project, and it saves me tons and tons of time. It's going to be a very quick one, guys, so we're just going to jump on in. What we're talking about today is Blueprint Function Libraries. So I've got this basic project here, and I've got a lot of the sort of core classes that you might add when you start a new project. I've got my save game class, a player controller class, a few different classes of game mode, my game instance class, which if we have a look in the project settings in maps and modes, we can see I've set here as my game instance class right here, BP my game instance. And for good measure, I've also got a copy of BP third person character, from the third person template project. What I'm gonna do now is right click in my content browser and go to blueprint and blueprint function library. I'm gonna call this BPFL underscore my library, something like that, and open this up. And basically what a blueprint function library is, is a place where you define a bunch of different functions. You can give them inputs and outputs, and you can call these functions from pretty much any actor inside of your project from pretty much anywhere inside of your project. So I'm going to show you a few handy functions that I like to make to save me a lot of time in the long run. The first one I'm going to call get my and I'm going to start a lot of these with get my just to make them easier to pull up in uh, my event graphs in other blueprints. I'm going to call this one get my game instance. And in here, what we can do is get game instance and not get my game instance, which as you can see is this function that we're defining right now. We want to get our game instance. This is the object reference for a cast to my game instance, like so. And because we've only got one game instance and we don't need to feed anything into this function, this will always, um, you know, this will always work. There's always a game instance, as long as this is the game instance, as I said, that you've defined in your project settings, we can right click on this and convert this to a pure cast. And if we add a return node here and drag this object reference onto the return node, and I might just get rid of this as BP. So it just says my game instance. This is now a function that returns our game instance. And we can even make this function pure by selecting it and checking pure in the details panel right here. And I'll just open another blueprint. I'll just open this character. And in the event graph, I can get my game instance right here. And just like that, I've got a cast to my game instance. So for example, my game instance contains a function in it to save my game. So I can pull off of here and I can save my game just like so. And you can go even a step further if you wanted to sort of make a function that does this, you can also do that. So in my blueprint function library, I might just duplicate this right here and I'll just call this one uh, save my game. And this one, um, I don't actually want to be pure because I want to make sure there is actually a save game. So I won't make this one pure. I'll make it uh, one that we have to execute. I can actually just remove this output. And what I want to do here is just call my save function inside of my uh, game instance. And I can plug this in here like so. And while we're at it, why don't we just uh, duplicate get my uh, game instance and we'll call this one get my save game. And this one, we definitely do not want to be pure. We want to remove this output and we want to get the save game. So this is a, a variable inside of my game instance that is an object reference to my save game. And I can right click on this, convert it to a validated get. And then if it is valid, we will return the save game like so. Um, so this one, yeah, it will not be pure just because we're checking 
if the save game is valid. So we do want to execute this validated get and we, um, we don't want this to return anything if it is not valid. You might even put a print string on here to say the save game is not valid. And now, for example, in my character, I can get my save game like so. And just like that, I've got a node I can execute that will return my save game. You can, uh, you can, you know, you can pull maybe a struct from this that is the struct of the details that you're saving in your save game. You know, you can set them, you can call save here. Uh, you can do all sorts of nifty stuff with this. But let's move on and look at a few more different handy functions in here. So once again, I'm gonna duplicate get my game instance and I'm gonna call this one get my player controller, like so. I'll get rid of these nodes and I'll get rid of this output and I will get player controller, get player controller. And I'm gonna cast to my player controller class that I've created. Again, you can make this pure. Um, I'll convert this to a pure cast and I'll plug this in here. I'll get rid of this as BP. That's a bit neater and I will make sure that this um, function is pure. So again, you've got a pure function that you can call from anywhere, get my, and then all of a sudden I've got all of these functions that pop up and I can get my player controller, just like that. We can do the same with the character. I can duplicate this and I'll just call this one, get my character, like so. And this, I will get rid of these. I will get player character. I'll use this to cast to my character. And I'll only use this if my character does exist. You may want to, you know, um, sort of uh, leave this as, as an impure cast, plug this in here, make this function not pure. If you're not sure that there will indeed be a character to cast to, but for my purposes, this is fine. I'm going to convert this to a pure cast and plug this in here as per usual, get rid of the as BP to make this a bit neater. And then I've got a pure function that gets my character. And the cool thing about these two right here is uh, for example, we can make a function that enables or disables the input for my character. Um, so for example, if you want to, uh, you know, disable the input in this character and I'll do this in a different, I'll just open up a game mode blueprint. So for example, in my game mode, something happens and I want to enable or disable the input on my character. Um, you know, you could be queuing a level sequence or a sequence of dialogue or something like that in a story game and you want to disable the input or you've got a certain UI element that pops up and, and you don't want to be controlling the character, but you want game input still to be active. You know, you name it, a bunch of different uh, scenarios where you might want to disable the input. You would have to uh, get the player controller. And you would also need to get player character and you would for example disable input this would go into player controller and this would go into the actor to disable the input of now that's three nodes and again you need a different node which is enable input if you wanted to enable the input and plug these in here like so but what we can actually do is in our blueprint function library, I'm gonna create a new function. I'm gonna call it enable slash disable input. And I'm going to get my player controller, this pure function that we created, very nifty, and get my character. And I can disable input. This will go into player controller. This will go into the target like so. And then we can give this function an input and I'll call it something like disable with a Boolean. Drag off of here and press B to get a branch. And if we do want to disable, we will indeed disable. And then I will also enable input. 
plug this in here. And just like that, we have a function that we can call that will enable or disable the input. So instead of having to pull up these nodes every time, we've got these um, very nifty pure casts. Um, these don't necessarily need to be a cast, but I mean, they exist, so why not use them? And in our game mode here, we can just type enable slash, and we've got enable or disable input. All of those just become one node. We can choose to disable. And if you're anything like me and you like to, you know, control the input of your character with lots of different events like cinematics and dialogue and whatnot, this indeed becomes very, very useful. Now, this is probably a good time to mention, uh, you know, a little bit of a caveat with using all these casts. And uh, so these are pure casts. You want to make sure that they would actually succeed. So for example, if you were switching out the character class, which, you know, you shouldn't be doing too much, you should probably be using uh, child classes and, and whatnot. Um, you want to make sure that these casts will actually work. So this is actually the controller class that you're using, and this is actually the character class that you're using. And the other thing is that uh, casting kind of creates a hard reference to uh, the, the actor that you've casted to, and that reference will exist as long as the blueprints you've casted from and the blueprint that you've casted to both still exist. Uh, so you don't want to be creating hard references to to and from classes that you know sh shouldn't really be connected um, if that makes any sense you probably want to look into you know um, the appropriate times and places to cast and classes to cast to and from like for example casting to and from your character and animation blueprint of that character is not a big deal because as long as one exists the other is going to exist so with all that being said let's move on i'm going to show you one other thing which is uh creating functions that return these game modes no matter what your game mode is and for this we're going to need an enumeration for this method uh, if you guys know a better method or a different method feel free to let me know in the comments section um, but what i'm going to do for my three different game modes here is i'm going to right click and go to blueprint enumeration and i'll call this enum underscore game modes Oop, gamer modes and I'll open this up. I'll add three enumerators. The first one will be game mode A, and I'm going to control C this, and I'm gonna make this one game mode B, and I'm gonna make this one game mode C, like so. And I'll save that and close that. And now in my blueprint function library, um, I am just gonna create a new function and I'll call it get my game mode. Now, because these game modes are three different classes, uh, they might have, you know, they'll have different functions in them and whatnot. Um, so basically what I'm going to do to differentiate between these three game modes is I'm just going to add a function in each of them. So game mode A is going to have game mode A function. This is just an example name. I'll control C that compile and save that and close that. And I'm going to do this in each of these game modes, just quickly create a function that we can call. This one will be game mode B function, compile and save that. And then in game mode C, open full blueprint editor and add game mode C function like so. And that's just so that there's something we can call from these as an example. So in my get my game mode function, I can get game mode, whoops, get game mode. And I'm first going to cast to game mode A, like so. And this will not be pure because um, we basically, uh, you know, we don't know which game mode we're going to be running. So the sort of multiple outcomes for this function, we do want it to execute. I'll also duplicate this and I'll cast to game mode B. And one more time, duplicate it again and cast to game mode C. What we can do is add a return node. And 
the first output on this return node, I'm going to call game mode. And I will change this to the enumeration that we created, which is enum game modes like so. And I'm just going to set these on each return node. So if I duplicate these down here, this one will return game mode A. This one will return game mode B. And this one will return game mode C. And then when each of these cast fails, uh, if this is not indeed the game mode, we can then just try the next one, so on and so forth and try the next one. And then maybe on the last one, you want to put a print string that says, you know, game mode cast failed or something like that. And then we can plug this into here and each of these will create a new output. So, uh, you know, these will return nothing, but then basically what we can do when we want to use this function is for example, in my character, I can just type get my, and I've got all of these handy functions that I've just created. I can get my game mode and then offer this enumeration. I can do a switch like so. And off game mode A, I can, if I just search for function, I can do game mode A function off game mode A. Do game mode B function off game mode B so on and so forth. So you can sort of customize your logic and only call these events uh, if they are indeed that game mode, like so. So uh, that's super handy if you've got multiple game modes and you just want to quickly and easily be able to cast to the game mode and start doing logic uh, without, you know, doing a bunch of checks and, and replacing a bunch of the same nodes over and over and over again. And uh, this actually works if I can um, find the P key here, P keyboard event. And when I call this function, I'll just print a string and the string I'll print is the game mode enumerator converted to a string like so. So this is in my character and I just want to make sure that if I set this to game mode A, I've got my character here and I hit play. I press P, it will print game mode A, game mode A, like so. And if I change this to game mode B and hit play, game mode B. And if I change it to game mode C, and hit play, game mode C. And that's pretty much it guys. I just wanted to show you blueprint function libraries in case you haven't checked them out already because I find them super, super useful, saves me a bunch of time. And if you guys can think of any other useful functions to add in your blueprint function libraries or just what was useful for you, let me know down in the comment section. And as per usual, if this video has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.